Hello everyone and welcome back to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today we are going to be doing the 26 3D printer vlog. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be implementing the final upgrades and modifications that are going to make the printer exceptional. Now the main reason why in the last episode I decided to do revamp so many different aspects of the printer is because I want to make it greater than the uh, Flash Forge. I want to make a, uh, a superior printer and the fact that I'll be able to print you know, exotic filaments like I mentioned and of course it'll have a superior accuracy and stability. The first thing I want to tackle is this new direct drive extruder system. So before we can even start on that, I have to go ahead and tear everything down. Just undoing our handiwork here of zip ties. So I went ahead and extracted the hot end the end stop and the actual fan. Now ultimately I will need to disassemble this base here in order to transition the, uh, the new actual direct drive extruder mount, but I'm gonna wait on that because one, I wanna make sure it's actually gonna, everything is gonna fit together before I even you know, disassemble this and go through all the trouble. So I'm gonna make sure that all of this stuff fits to the new plate first. And then if that, if it works, then yep, I'll go ahead and rip this thing apart. All right, folks, back at the workbench, we have the hot end and all of its accoutrements here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the parts I've been printing off. We're going to need these two pieces and this two for the fan. Everything's going to be switched over to a three wheel tensioning system, much like the Z axis that I've implemented in previous videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the E3D Titan, which is one of the things I purchased along with a low profile stepper motor, very small. Now the characteristics of the stepper motor are pretty impressive. It's uh, pretty close to a standard stepper motor. Here's a Kaisan which is basically, it's what I've used mainly for 3D printing so far. I'm gonna get a postage scale, so it's not gonna be super accurate, but it'll give us a good idea. So the uh, Kaisan, it comes in at a whopping 375. Let me make sure that's zero. Yep, so that's 370, 375 grams. This uh, new stepper motor here is 130 grams. So considerably lighter. Now that, will definitely help with the actual uh, stress on the X and Y gantries as well as the speed of our prints. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this bad boy here. And we have our uh, gearing as well as like tension knobs and whatnot. I'm sure the uh, wiki that I'm following, I'll link that in the description, will give some clarification of that. So I will say that these, the folks at E3D have really done a terrific job in uh, explaining how to actually assemble and use their product on the their wiki. So we have our basic parts. So this is like our motor it has uh, the gearing, which essentially what happens is the stepper motor, I believe has, okay, so yeah, it's this tooth cog and it moves this giant gear. That is a reduction gear. So the uh, stepper motor doesn't have to work as much, which will be nice for this small guy. I don't want to tack on a giant heat sink, which would of course weigh things down. So it will definitely relieve some strain on that motor. We have the mount. So this is the uh, where everything will mount. So the stepper motor will mount up like so. I'll put the uh, Thingiverse link for this partic these particular two models in the description along with all the other models I'll be featuring in today's video. Another neat thing is it comes with literally uh, pretty much everything you need, parts, tools, etc. So what I need to do here first, of course, is get out my Nipex pliers. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the existing Bowden tube we have. Okay, that was easy enough. So we have the idler. We have the main assembly with the gear, hardware, including the springs, grub screws, and regular screws. And there's two little guides, one's for 1.75 millimeter filament, one's for three. So it looks like it wants us to assemble it to the motor first. So on this model here, the uh, this one hole, that'll be the bottom part. And of course, that is where I want this little bit. This is where the E3D will uh, attach to, like so. So I want this po part pointing down. So it'll be like this. I'm gonna point the wires up in the stepper motor just to give it as much, so I don't have to extend the wire out. I want to attach the grub screw into our gear. So we have a supplied bit of Bowden tubing. I wanna go ahead and stick that into our V6. So it has to be protruding about 14 millimeter, or actually, sorry, 16 millimeter per the wiki. Tighten our adjustment screw here. Give it a good etch, grab a razor blade. Oh wow, that is a tight fit. 
try to make it so the fan doesn't stick out too much. This has as much clearance. Oops, almost forgot. I might have to move the fan around a bit. Those wires are a little bit too dangerously close. They're either getting pinched or they're getting melted. <laughs> So do you see this belt tensioner? Yeah, not sure if I'm gonna be able to get screws through to it once I actually get this thing on. Yeah, I'm gonna take this guy off again. Of course, I'll just use like a little set of needle nose here to tighten it once I actually have it on. Okay, I'm just gonna try the screw out here. What you do is you tighten it down so this it backs this nut all the way into this little uh, recess here, and then just get it just tight enough to where it'll stick so you can adjust it easily later. Now they wanna go ahead and have me adjust the idler arm or add it in there. That's nice. Right to the motor, that's a really good uh, method there. See how it just goes right there. So as you can see, just operates like so. Really clean motion. So it looks like, okay, so we add a compression spring along with an M4 hex nut, so it looks like it's this guy here. So there we go. That's pretty, pretty clean right there. I like that. Before I go ahead and start swapping everything over, I just need to go ahead and make sure that stepper motor is wired in properly because the leads are pretty small. So I'll solder that in here. <laughs> All right, folks, I got the, uh, the separate motor soldered up properly. So now what I need to do is I need to go ahead and take it off, these particular parts off. Pretty much any parts we're gonna be upgrading on the printer. So this entire bar is coming off. The LCD, I'm actually gonna take that off. I bought 40 feet of uh, 10 lead wire and that will be extending it. I wanna put it up here, so that'll be neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembling everything. All right, folks, so I got the carriage and everything taken apart. So now I'm just stripping all of the uh, parts that I can off of it. So I can go ahead and recoup those bits of hardware. So I will uh, skip forward to when I have everything completely stripped apart and I'll go ahead and uh, show the assembly process. Another thing I also did was I marked on the uh, extrusion beam uh, rear right with an arrow pointing up just to show the orientation of this beam so I don't have to move this around. So now that I've got all of our uh, hardware basically stripped out of our old assemblies, I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting all of the nuts back in. Now the way I do that is I get these vice grips and you see these little detents, they're a little bit, they're a little tricky to get everything in initially. I just use a clamping force of this to press everything in. Just be careful not to crush the plastic and use something that doesn't have too jagged of an edge. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Some of these are a little easier than the rest. We'll start off with the uh, belt holders. Now it's time to go ahead and put the end stop in. And there's even little holes for the uh, solder point contacts for the switch and the plate there. So now I have to go ahead and get this fan adapter taken care of here, which I think I know what's to, what to do. Yeah, I'll do a number like this. Although I want to kind of chop off these ends. And we'll just attach that like so. Get some blue tack to stick them into place for now. 
so they don't fall out while I'm trying to bolt everything in. So I got pretty much everything taken care of here. I'm gonna need to fashion a new fan bracket because this one is not compatible with this particular fan duct here, which I'll probably keep this particular fan duct because the one that's designed for this is made for a totally different fan design. But what I'm gonna do here now is I have everything lined up exactly how I need to assemble it. So I'm gonna assemble the two carriages together, make life a little bit easier, bore out these holes. Is going to be a bit tight. So now I just have to tension and tighten it correctly. Okay. Yeah, it looks like, see that, those two bits there? This is pushing this all the way forward, which it, it's a little too tight, so I'm going to have to uh, fix that a bit. Be right back. So I had to uh, grind this bit down here on both of these, actually all of these here, including the extruder plate. I did that one earlier, but yeah, I had to grind it down with my Dremel tool here, this nice little diamond bit. As you can see, the uh, down here I had to use like two of these smaller bits stacked up with these other washers that I bought by mistake. Good thing I bought them because these guys would not fit properly. I would have to sand the crap out of it, and even then this tensioning screw wouldn't be able to go in correctly. So yeah, I had to use uh, just a combo of these guys with these guys here. And that, uh, yeah, that saved the day because now everything slides properly. So this is uh, definitely a pretty decent system, a lot easier to tension than the previous one where you had to like hold everything together while you tighten two bolts simultaneously. And uh, yeah, that was never really that fun, but. Yep, I went ahead and got everything reassembled together here. My only real critique on the model besides me having to sand down those bits there is uh, this particular screw hole is has like a weird indention, which isn't really, I'd have to get a lot smaller of an M5 screw for that, but I went ahead and just improvised the washer. Hopefully that'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this side like I assembled this one. A pretty simple process. So I'll just show you the one of the wheels real quick on how I assembled that. I'll show you this end wheel. It's a little tricky. So with this, the rough side is the outer part on the tensioning end. And then we get two of our small washers here. These are the perfectly machined one millimeter washers I got from Open Builds that cost me a small fortune. And then I get then I had to stack these up to about level of six because that is the height of this here. So I get four of these bigger ones. And then I get one more small one, the wheel, oops. And then another small one, and then a big, one of the big guys here. And that's, per and then of course I stack this guy on here and tighten it down. Okay, so got this assembled here, just trying it out. Uh, it's pretty easy operation. Once you get everything on, you'll want to, uh, you can fully tighten the top two screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But you don't wanna fully tighten the screw to get it, this screw to get completely tensioned, or to get it completely tightened down until you have the uh, this screw properly tensioned here. So you just have to like make sure it doesn't rock back and forth. If, it, if it's a little bit loose, then tighten it up until it feels nice and rigid. This, as in nothing's really loose. The uh, So you can just give it a good yank test. That's maybe just a little bit more. And okay, there we go. Once you have it at your desired tension, you can go ahead and tighten it down. Don't go too crazy because you don't want to crack the plastic. There we go. So now I just have to finish all of this assembly here, the little nuts and whatnot, and the uh, bearings for the belts. And once I get that done, I can go ahead and install this onto the printer. However, not gonna be able to do that tonight, just running out of time. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save that for the next episode. So just to recap what we did, we finished our extruder assembly and the extruder and hot end assembly. And that is all good to go. We have the H-bar uh, bearings, or of course rollers, along with everything here taken care of. Everything is pretty much wired up and ready to go. Just need to plug and play it essentially. That's pretty much about all we've done in today's episode here so next episode we're going to be extending the wires for the lcd board we're going to be installing and machining these anti-backlash nuts for the z-axis as well as stiff reinforcing them with these uh strengthened 
center or corner pieces for the actual outward going bars on the uh, z-axis as well as installing these new and improved uh, bed leveling screws here that are of course just a finger or a thumb screw instead of just your standard screw and lastly i'd also need to engineer a new fan bracket as well as do some other wiring bits and bobs mainly organizing how the wiring is going to be coming off of our hot end and attaching to the frame after it's uh, gone through the tube that it goes through and i have another special project that involves uh, routing the filament to our extruder so stay tuned for that for future episodes and just want to thank you all for watching if you haven't already go ahead and hit that like button consider subscribing and check out some other videos coming up on the screen here and have a great day